What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 worst moments of the dying days of WCW. Now, WCW uh, in its heyday, in its prime, was uh, obviously competing with WWE in the Monday Night War. So it was a situation where, you know, people were tuning in, they were enjoying what was happening on their television. But at some point, it just started to get like embarrassingly bad to the point where booking decisions didn't make sense the the fans were starting to turn on the product because they were like confused on how things were you know how the shows and the pay-per-views were going it, a lot of the it was like a lot of chaos and and backstage politicking that you could see happening within like the storylines and the matches where it was like it was it was ruining the show they were self-sabotaging themselves it seemed like so we're gonna check out some of these moments that really led to the ultimate demise of the product appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel and let's get right into this one you had some iconic <sighs> moments throughout their existence as a promotion Throughout the 90s, WCW acted as a great alternative for fans and offered an edgier and exciting product with the introduction of the New World Order as well as the introduction of the innovative and wildly celebrated Cruiserweight division. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as WWE became red hot in the late 90s, WCW's quality quickly diminished and this resulted in the once popular promotion putting out some of the worst wrestling content wild, ever bro. seen. This was particularly the case during the final years of WCW's oh, existence, specifically between 1989 guitar. to 2001. <laughs> Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the worst moments of the final dying days of WCW. We're going to get into this, man. Subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Tank Abbott pulls out a knife. Now, Tank Abbott was one of the most interesting characters that debuted during the final years of WCW. Abbott was a legitimate MMA fighter and head writer for mm. WCW Vince Russo saw dollar signs the moment he saw him. Russo would even pitch an idea which would see Abbott win the WCW title, but thankfully this never materialized. Abbott had some rather infamous moments during his stint in the company, but one particular segment stands out for all the wrong reasons. The Super Bowl pay-per-view in 2000 featured the aforementioned Abbott taking on a wrestler known as Big Al. This wouldn't be a standard match as it was WCW in the year 2000, meaning the match ended up being a leather jacket on a pole match. Abbott would win the match but... Anything on a pole match when you look at it in hindsight is kind of cringe. But a leather jacket on a pole match? Y'all gotta give me more context to the importance of this leather jacket please let me know for those his wrestling historians who know about this match and feud please let me know the significance of them fighting over a damn leather jacket i just but a terrifying incident would ensue shortly after abbott would proceed to pull out a knife and place it to big al's throat informing everyone that he could kill him WCW Whoa. quickly panned away from the commotion and WCW commentators tried to logically explain what had happened, but even they were completely baffled. This was an unplanned spot and it was a miracle that somebody wasn't seriously hurt. Oh, Number wow. 9, Oklahoma. Now, there have been some tasteless wrestling parodies over the years, but the parody of Jim Ross that WCW presented in 2000 went too far. The character would be known as Oklahoma and was portrayed by former WWE writer Ed Ferrara. Really? Ferrara would dress in a manner similar to JR, but he would mock JR's Bell's palsy, which oh. is where the majority of the criticism from the character came. WCW devoted so much time to this outrageous character that Oklahoma would even win the Cruiserweight title, which speaks volume in relation to how little WCW valued the title during the final years of the company. The character quite rightly angered fans, as well as people in the wrestling industry. JR yeah. was beloved, respected, and admired, and to mock him in this manner simply wasn't going to go under the radar. J yeah, that's 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 kind of cringe. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, that's definitely kind of cringe. Cornette would even challenge for our top fist fight, and he was so outraged at WCW's mockery of arguably wrestling's greatest commentator. Number yeah, 8, The Blood Botch. 2000 was a pivotal Super year for cringe. WCW as a promotion as everything they tried to do to remain relevant and popular seemed to completely flop. A great example of this was during the feud between former WCW world champion Kevin Nash and the New Blood stable. During an episode of WCW Thunder, Nash would be standing in the ring and a planned spot was to see a bucket of blood falling on his head. 
However, this would ultimately fail as the blood completely missed Nash, making the. <laughs> I like the fact how Nash just looked at it, bro. <laughs> That's so funny to me. He just. <laughs> so nonchalantly just. All right. Well, that was that was a fail. <laughs> the stable looked completely incompetent. Nash virtually no sold a botch, which was probably the smartest move. Yeah. Just a few weeks later, a similar incident would occur as Nash was about to perform a jackknife powerbomb on Vince Russo on the outside of the ring. Blood would fall from the ceiling once again, and it somehow missed Nash for the second time. You have one job to make sure someone stands on the spot that says X and make sure the bucket of blood falls right where it's supposed to. And once again, you can't get the job done. It was a total disaster and borderline laughable. Number seven, Judy <clears throat> Bagwell on a forklift. Vince Russo was obsessed with placing various items on poles during his time in WCW, from <sighs> leather jackets to Viagra, but in the year 2000, he developed this concept even further when he decided to have a Judy Bagwell on a forklift match. The stipulation alone was enough to make fans realize that WCW was dead and there was no going back, but the execution of said match was beyond belief. The match would be between Canyon and Buff Bagwell, and if Canyon won, Judy would be his new valet, whilst if Bagwell won, Judy would be free and wouldn't have to worry about any torment from the villainous Canyon. The match began with Canyon driving to the ring with Judy strapped to a forklift. This is when Canyon cut a promo and declared, Everybody knows that this match is supposed to be a Judy Bagwell on a pole match, but I searched this entire second-rate country of Canada. But after searching this entire godforsaken country, I couldn't find a pole that would hold that big fat battle axe. The match was terrible, and even featured a run-in from David Arquette. Bagwell would win the match, and he would safely be reunited with his mother, who was dramatically lowered down to the ground. Number 6. Goldberg's Car Window Incident just, a lot of this is just ridiculous cringe. Oh but WCW God. was often compared to the Wild West in the sense that talent did whatever they liked with no repercussions. During the final years of the company, wrestlers going off script was common, and there was nobody with any true sense of authority to make them fall in line. One of the wrestlers who WCW management struggled to rein in was Goldberg, who in late 1999 went off script and almost bled to death as a result. Mm. On an episode of WCW Thunder, Goldberg would attack a limo with a metal pipe, but then went off script and smashed a window with his own hand. Jesus. The glass cut an artery in his arm, and he was forced to go to hospital in- Bro, that- I'm gonna be honest with you. That's- that- bro, Goldberg back then was different, bro. You break a window with your bare hands, bro. You you different, bro. You different for sure. Immediately, this should have never happened. And whilst <clears throat> nobody is truly to blame other than Goldberg himself, yeah. WCW management should have had a better control over their talent. This situation was a clear sign that inmates were running the asylum. Number five, Goldberg turns heel. Oh, speaking of Goldberg, during the late 90s, Goldberg's popularity skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. Their approach of booking Goldberg in squash matches worked wonders as Goldberg gradually became the most popular babyface in all of WCW. Facts. Unfortunately, things would begin to fall apart when they made the questionable decision to have Kevin Nash end Goldberg's 173-0 win streak. Despite this, the crowd remained pro-Goldberg. This is until Vince Russo implemented the drastic and damaging decision in 2000 to turn him heel. Goldberg would turn heel at the Great American Bash pay-per-view, turning on Nash and siding with Russo and his new blood stable. To say this heel turn flopped hard would be an understatement. Goldberg looked uncomfortable in the role, and fans hated it. Mm. It completely killed the mystique of the former world champion, and Russo would ultimately take no responsibility for the failed heel turn, <laughs> claiming course. on Sportskeeda's Legion of Raw that Goldberg's heart wasn't in it. Number four, David Arquette <laughs> wins the... Uh, you know, how about you don't turn him heel? You don't, you know... Sometimes you don't have to break what ain't broken. And then, of course, this one, David Arquette winning the WCW world title. That's um, it's a little bit much if you don't <laughs> say so. Uh, an actor winning your top title in the company just, gonna, just put that out there. The WCW world title. Now, the world title should be the most respected and prestigious title in a pro wrestling it company. Should. But in 2000, WCW completely killed any ounce of credibility the big gold belt had. Prominent actor David Arquette would take part in a tag team match which pitted him and world champion DDP against Jeff Jarrett and Eric Bischoff. The stipulation stated that whoever obtained the pinfall would win the title. 
Naturally, Arquette won the match and became world champion by pinning Bischoff in one of the most shocking moments in wrestling history. The decision was blasted by fans and Arquette still gets ridiculed and blasted for it to this very day. Rusev still likes to justify his decision to crown Arquette as the champion, but he made a total mockery out of WCW and their once celebrated championship. Facts. Number 3. Vince Russo wins the WCW World Title uh. Unfortunately, David Arquette winning the title wasn't the only time the title became worthless. In September of 2000, Vince Russo decided to make himself the new WCW World Champion. That's right, the guy who was writing the WCW product decided to make himself the world champion. Which is Russo stupid. would take on Booker T for the title inside a steel cage on Nitro. The match would be heavily overbooked and featured numerous run-ins from top talent. Bro, my man has on f complete football gear, bro. The finish of the match came when Goldberg speared Russo through the cage, resulting in Russo winning the match and being crowned the new WCW world champion. Days later on Thunder, Russo would announce that he was vacating the title as he wasn't a wrestler, rendering the entire title change completely pointless. Waste of time. To the finger poke of doom. For the yep. January 4th, 1999 this, episode this of WCW right Nitro looks set to be a cringe fantastic too. <laughs> show. They had promised a Starcade 98 rematch between Kevin Nash and Goldberg, but halfway through the show, Goldberg was arrested, taking him out of the main event. Hulk Hogan then made his grand return to WCW as Goldberg's high profile replacement. The main event match between Hogan and Nash lasted just 30 seconds. After some stalling, Hogan would poke Nash in the chest, then proceeded to pin the world champion to once again become the top guy in WCW. Hogan and Nash would then celebrate as an NWO and NWO Wolfpack would reunite. Now, this was a historic moment for all the wrong reasons, as yeah. wrestling fans had completely lost faith in WCW following this stunt. The January 4th edition of Nitro was also the episode of Nitro in which Tony Schiavone spoiled a Mankind WWE mm. title win on Raw, resulting in thousands upon thousands of fans changing channels and never looking back. And number one, Bash Damn. at the Beach 2000. I mean, this, like I said, backstage politicking, you could see it play out on screen. Like, it, it was just running rampant. People did whatever the hell they wanted to because guess what? We can. What are you gonna do about it? Like it was just, it was just, it it wasn't conducive of making a cohesive wrestling show. It's just I want to do this because I want to, and I think it's funny. I think it's gonna be entertaining, and half the time it wasn't entertaining like that. I don't know, bro. This they 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 pretty much shot themselves, honestly. The WCW's Bash at the Beach pay per view in 2000 was synonymous for everything wrong about the final years of the promotion's existence. Mm -hmm. The biggest match on the show was to see Hulk Hogan take on Jeff Jarrett for the title, as prior to the event, backstage issues between Hogan and Vince Russo ensued, predominantly yep. due to Hogan wanting to win the title. Ultimately, Russo decided to have Jarrett lay down for Hogan, allowing Hogan to win the match. This was completely planned and was going to lead to a storyline where fans became fully aware of Hogan's contractual backstage power. Following Hogan's victory, Hogan would cut a promo where he declared, Is this your idea, Russo? That's why this company is in the damn shape it's in, because of bullshit like this. Russo then proceeded to cut a shoot promo in which he would mm -hmm. completely berate Hogan in every conceivable way and even claimed that he was a piece of shit. The shoot promo was not part of the script and Hogan had no idea it was about to happen. Mm. This led to him departing WCW and filing a defamation of character lawsuit against Russo. During Russo's confusing promo, he would announce that Jarrett would take on Booker T in the main event of the show as Jarrett was still the WCW world champion. Booker T would then be crowned the new champion to close out one of the most infamous wrestling pay-per-views of all time. But they have it, folks. 10 of the worst Bruh, moments that's when you really just think about how everything just imploded in their last years it, it just you can tell it made sense it was like yep this is the ship is sinking abandon all hope and that's when vince did what he did and uh the rest is history so comment down below let me know um what moment if it wasn't in here in this video do you think was a, another catalyst to the downfall of wcw let me know down below man but i appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel road to 150k and i am still the undisputed youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace